Okay, right, welcome back. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss how I would do 1 million GWP, how I'd write 1 million in business in under six months, starting an insurance from scratch. And this is gonna be based on an e-commerce client, somewhere you can buy insurance online. So just some background on this. This is a recent post I made on LinkedIn, and it got quite a few comments, quite a few likes, a bit of engagement and you know a few things that I mentioned here that people agreed with, a few things that people didn't agree with and look this is just a really short LinkedIn post. So what I thought would be good is to run through this, jump into it a little bit deeper, give a little bit of my understanding behind it and also you know just to sort of inspire some of you guys if you guys are currently working towards these goals or you're looking to generate business at a quicker pace then maybe a few of these takeaway points would be really helpful to you before i jump into this disclaimer quick introduction my name is brandon we're the rainmaker for insurance firms we help insurance firms get more policies more customers more premium and just a better selling experience is my website feel free to check it out if you'd like to all the links in the description for my linkedin and for my website are on in the description of this video wicked so quick disclaimer look i do not own an insurance firm and i've not done this myself so i have not generated a million pounds in premium for my own insurance company okay and but just some information, I do work with insurance firms that do these numbers and have generated these policy firms and have done this for previous employees myself. I've worked in many verticals, different niches across insurance. And this post here is just some of the common traits that other insurance firms are doing that I see that is making them have better success than maybe others. So quick disclaimer, I do not own an insurance company. I've not done this myself, but this is just a way that I would do it based on all the experience that we have and all the results that we're getting for clients and also for seeing the inner workings of insurance firms for over the past decade of being in this space. So that being said, how would I generate 1 million GWP in under six months starting from scratch? Now, when I do mean scratch, I do not mean starting an insurance company with no money in your pockets, no investment and no skills or assets. Okay, so this is assuming that you start an insurance company that has the investment and money to be able to do this yourself. What I mean by that is this is done through paid traffic, which means you have to have an investment for staff members. You need to be able to have investment to put a website in place and build this infrastructure. I've sold thousands of policies myself over the phone over one decade of insurance. So I started my journey selling insurance over the phone, hard selling, overcoming objections, making pitches, offering stuff to people, and sold millions of pounds of stuff over the phone myself, okay? So, personally, I really love call center, I really love phone sales, and what I see a biggest, the, one of the biggest problems that I see across the two is that some insurance companies that have e-commerce don't have the sales side, and a lot of the companies that have the sales side don't have very good online experiences, they don't have many paid traffic, they don't have landing pages. If you add a combination of the two together, honestly, that is really where just skyrocket success. So what I would do and how would I achieve this is through one product in one niche, okay? So I'd have an easy product to sell in one niche and specialize in one area. So this could be gadget insurance, pet insurance, cycle insurance, this could be public liability, this could be like trade liability. So I would have a brand built around one specific niche and industry. So if we use life insurance, for example, it'd probably be something focused around just dads, just mums, and it would be a very niche product, but it would be very specialist within that. One of the biggest problems that I see, and the reason why I would do this, is to lower the complexity in the selling experience. So a lot of brokers or commercial brokers or car insurance brokers, they do a bit of everything, right? They do cars, houses, commercial, fleets, commercial combined, motor trade, they might do a little bit of travel insurance, they might put a little bit of all this stuff in place. Now the biggest problem is, is that one, if you go to market those products, you don't have enough budget to be able to go all in on one, meaning that you sort of just bit of a fisher net approach and you do a bit of marketing everything, which means that the budget is not that efficient. And also it is a complex, it's, it's a more complex selling experience. So what I mean is your staff have to be trained on many different verticals. They have to understand lots of different specialities within the product, which means that they can't go super deep. If you just do one thing and do it really well, you understand it better than everyone. You can make a very systemized selling experience 
and it's just more scalable, meaning the training takes less time. It means that the, the, the marketing can be more directed at people's pain points because the longer you're in the industry, the more you understand pain points, you understand the trends, and it's just a lot easier to understand in my opinion. Now, why would I pick, now one of the comments here is why would I pick things that are such low premium? And I do agree, the gadget insurance, travel insurance, cycle insurance, pensions, these are traditionally lower premiums. Now the gadget insurance being a lot less lower premium than all the others, one of the things about lower premiums is yes, that you make less in profit per policy sale, but because the sale amount is so low, the conversion rates are significantly higher. So let's just say there was a thousand people get a quote for gadget insurance versus a thousand people that get a quote for high risk specialist home insurance that is really high premium, for example. You are gonna get more people based on a percentage of people purchase the lower item than they will the more expensive item. That's just default, there's nothing you can do about that, you cannot argue that. More people will buy something at a lower premium or a lower cost than they would high. This is why there is more car sales for standard four focuses than there is Lamborghinis. That's because the Lamborghini costs more than a Ford Focus does. So why would select something like that is because the whole aim of this post is to generate as much premium in a smaller amount of time frame, which means that we want high volume, we want low, we want high volume and high conversion rates, which effectively means that we can sell things to quicker people. The good thing as well, if you select things like pet insurance, gadget insurance, is that the volume is significantly high. So there isn't really a competition when we're advertising people for new phones. We've got people like Vodafone, EE, these huge firms who are advertising new phones, spending hundreds of millions of pounds advertising new phones for their contracts. So there's a market already for new phones. All we're doing is just latching onto the bottom of that and just advertising to people. The same with pets, people buying pets, people love pets. So all we're doing is just playing onto pain points. The same with cycle insurance and all these other things. So there is significantly high volume with these type of products. So the conversion rates are tr traditionally higher and getting in front of people isn't as expensive as people actually think. So let's just take like fleet insurance. It is an expensive business to try and grab hold of the conversion rates are lower but when you do eventually win those products and when you do win the business you do get rewarded but it's a longer time frame and that's a hard thing to do in six months so why would select something that's a lower premium why would select one niche one product is for exactly those two reasons and again just to highlight that one point i would want something that is easy to quote is replicatable and can be built into an online journey if we have something that's extremely complex Putting this into an online journey where you can buy online, you can quote online is quite difficult to do. If you have something that's just easily replicatable, something that someone can purchase within five minutes or less, conversion rates are traditionally really high on that type of stuff. Second, how to build a risk reversal offer. Now I've made a lot of videos on this, which I will link below in here, but having a risk reversal offer that incentivizes people to take action with you. Okay, so essentially if we don't have the best product in the market, if we don't have the the product that has the best terms and conditions, has the best features and benefits, I don't wanna be in business. So I'm taking this on the basis that if the way was to do this, it would be based on something that has the best product in the market, okay? So product over everything, and essentially if we have the best product, we can build offer reversals around best price guarantee, best price promise, 14-day um, cancellation, get a refund if you beat a better price on this. There's a lot of risk reversal offers, but essentially why we would have this in place is because the service, what you provide, your friendly staff is not a big enough incentive for somebody to take action purchasing from you, but a risk reversal is your money on the line. We can guarantee you this, if not, you know, you get your money back. That is a very strong sales argument. And as somebody, some, when somebody does see that, they must know that you are confident enough to be able to provide them a product based on if you give their money back if they don't. So we would build a risk reversal. I'm not gonna to sit too long on this because I've made multiple videos on this, which again, I'll link below, but we would build a risk reversal, meaning that the conversion rates are gonna be even higher. It means that our click-through rates and all the advertisements are gonna be higher. And essentially, it's just gonna be an easier way to be able to get in hold of somebody and get in front of somebody and incentivize them to our website, through our quote funnels and onto our telephone. And step three, I would build an aggressive direct response marketing. So. 
I would put a large percentage of the budget that we have available to generate new business into Google, into Facebook ads, and build an omni-channel marketing approach to flood our ideal customer with our offer and create visuals around major pain points. So what I mean by this is we would do exactly what we do for clients now, and we would build an omni-channel marketing approach that attacks our ideal customer from many different angles across Facebook, across third party networks, on Instagram, on Google ads, on cross networks, on phone applications, iPhone, Android apps. And we would target everyone essentially across the internet. We would create visuals directly around their major pain points and we would create the visuals around the offer, the headlines around the offer that we provide to be able to incentivize people through to our landing pages, through to our quote funnels. And it's as simple as that. I'm not gonna to touch too long, too much more on that, but it would be aggressive direct response. Direct response essentially is a way of marketing that just has stronger call to actions as the easiest way that I can put that. Step four is I would build a landing page designed to generate online quotes with our offer as the forefront. So the offer, our risk reversal offer would be the main headline, would be the main position of our landing pages. And some landing pages, and what I mean by landing pages, some of the time is like websites aren't designed in a way to convert traffic. There's a lot going on, there's all these buttons, there's click here, press this, watch this. And effectively that doesn't push the traffic to the place that you wanna go. So we would build landing pages specifically for our target audience with strong call to actions and the offer as a forefront, get a quote, strong call to action, save money now, get the offer, that type of stuff. The fifth thing we would do is integrate an outbound sales team that calls every single quote submission. So every person that has submitted a quote on our website to get a price on the screen, we would call directly, we would add email flows. So an email that goes out straight away as somebody has submitted the quote form with their quote. We would then send a few follow-up emails with that. We would effectively on day 30 also provide a discount code. We would drop SMS flows, which means that it's a quote with the price goes straight over to their text messages and follow-ups. And the call center would aggressively call that quote submission to offer support. We wouldn't be calling them to hard sell them on the quote. What we would be doing is providing assistance and additional information on the basis that we can close that person if they're interested. So when I mention this to call centers, because there's a lot of, as a client that comes to mind that generates a lot of business through aggregators, they generate a lot of business through advertising and effectively they've built up a very big name in the industry and when I mentioned to them about adding outbound sales calls, why don't you call the quotes that come through? One of the replies to that was, we don't want to feel like we're pressuring our customer. We want them to have a, a nice experience. And if they're interested in the price, then they can call us. They can buy from us. But we don't want to be too pushy on them. And I understand that from a, from a point of view, you don't want to be too pushy. But what we would do is actually call these clients to offer support. So hi, have you got all the information that you need? Did you know about our price promise? Do you know how it works? You know, is there anything we can do for you as far as discounts? Go through the details. Oh, okay, you've entered your information slightly wrong here. Um, based on your actual information, this quote is now gonna be 10% cheaper. And then just understanding why the person's gonna be interested in this, how the product is actually best suited for them, and then just providing higher support and say, look, you know, you are a perfect fit for this and then making and flowing over into the actual sale. So we would still be calling them on the basis that we do want to sell them something, but it wouldn't be a, hi, I've just seen you've gotten this quote, do you want to take it out with us? It would be more based on look, providing the support. If this is a good fit, if they have shown interest, then we would position ourselves better for the sale. What I see a lot of people do is not having this step. This would be the number one step that would help us generate over 1 million GWP in six months. Without this step, we wouldn't be able to achieve this number without uh, without as much aggression. So this outbound sales team and having a correct flow, having all the SMS, the text messages, the emails, and having a proper structured call script that everyone follows, this is how we would actually generate that. And this would be the most important step. And then six, just the last few steps on this, is we would re replicate a simple sales process over the phone that everyone follows to an absolute T. Okay, so we're aiming for one call closes with proper sales processes including. So going through data capture, a system to basically how do you pitch someone correctly? How do you 
offer the sale in a correct way that is actually designed to get somebody to say yes. Systems for overcoming objections. So when somebody does say that I need to think about it, I'm not quite ready yet. You know, there's actually systems in place not to be too pushy, but just to be able to position yourself better for the sale and systems for follow up. So somebody says, OK, I am interested, but there's definitely no way I can buy now, but I can buy tomorrow. And having systems in place to be able to follow up, call that person, send in information, send text messages and all the stuff in between to be able to once that person has maybe got a quote from us, how do we keep them interested and convert them over to the sale? So this is a very important step because one of the issues that I see is that firms don't have sales scripts in place. They don't have something that is replicatable. So their staff member, their leading staff member is getting all the sales. But then a staff member over here is just not getting any sales because they haven't got the same systems in place. They're not doing the same thing as employee one. And effectively, if we can just package up something that works, give it to everyone, is scalable and rinse and repeat. And the seventh step from here is just rinse and repeat. So we've built all of these systems in place. We would just put more ad spend towards it and we would just scale up more and more and more and more. 15% online business, the 15% of the business we would have would be done online via the checkout just directly from the ads. The rest of that would be done from the call center. So the call center with the online journey is really what makes this an aggressive blend. And what I mean by an aggressive blend, this is a blend that is just skyrocketing success. There is a lot of insurance firms that have call centers and there's a lot of insurance firms that have the online journey. There's very, very few that com combine the two collectively. You know, some people still have a call center for customer service with their online journey, but they don't blend the two together as one whole system. There's very few that are doing it, and a client that comes to mind is doing around about 320,000 per month in sales from this exact system that we're using. They are calling, they are using call centers, their premium's not high, so it's the same type of product. It's not a high premium product. And this client is making over 320,000 per month in sales from this exact process. So it is something that works and this is exactly the method that I would do using that. If you've got any questions, obviously drop them below. P.S. This is a very top down view. So again, this video, even though I have gone deeper into this, there is still some missing steps on training, uh, recruiting and all the type of stuff that goes into it. For us to be able to do this, this would be based on, like I said, with initial investment startup and the goal to achieve that straight away. Some people wouldn't want to do that. And some people would want to start with lower staff members and not be so aggressive based on this video and this whole post as a whole was how we would do this in under six months starting from scratch. Okay, if you've got any questions, please let me know. Feel free to jump in. I'll leave the link to this actual post in the comments below. So if you want to share some comments, feel free to do that. Really appreciate you watching this video. Again, if you've got any questions, let me know. If you want to see how we can add you more customers, more leads, and if you want us to help you generate over 1 million GWP in under six months for your insurance company, then book in a call with me below as well. Shameless plug, we're really good at what we do, and I think you'd be extremely happy with that if it's something you're interested in. But yeah, appreciate watching our video, how we generate over a million GWP in under six months, starting from scratch. Subscribe, like, do all that good YouTube stuff, and we'll catch you again soon.